Hello, everyone. Happy WikiTree Day to you. Happy WikiTree Day, Murray. Hi there, Greg. How are you doing? I'm OK. I seem to be liked. <laughs> oh, it does seem a little bit. But yes. um, anyways, welcome, everyone, to WikiTree Day. And this is our, I, I love Bill in the chat said, three continuous hours of must-watch presentations. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, Bill. That's great. Um, so welcome to everyone who's here live, joining us live in the chat, and welcome to everyone who's watching this after the fact. Um, so we're quite happy to have you here. And the focus for this presentation, um, <laughs> that tail you see in the background and that shake you heard was my dog Finnegan. Sorry about that. The focus of this presentation is not my dog Finnegan. The focus is the Wikitree browser extension. And Murray is going to take us through um, so a deeper dive. Um, we did a presentation earlier to, today, and if you didn't see that, you might want to go back and check that out on how to install the Wikitree browser extension and how to set up um, some of the options. And Murray took us through a number of those options um, to change things on the pro on your profile and then the uh, various pages and whatnot. And we're going to continue on with that and then take a deeper dive into editing profiles because we didn't see any of those settings before. So without further ado, Murray, if you want to share your screen, then I'll add that and we can take it away. OK, share screen, fire screen, share. And am I up? Uh, you are now with Guillaume again. Yes. Yeah. So I forgot to show you a few things in the last one, and we ran out of time. So mm -hmm. um, under under the navigation um, section, and where did I put that? Oh, yeah. Got to go back to here. Uh, so under navigation, you've got the AK name links, um, the find menu, my menu, preview pages, preview sources. Um, under preview pages, you've got some choices about which things you want to allow to preview. I would, I would enable them all. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got some display options about what you want to show. Um, I, I show almost everything. I don't bother showing the page manager and the times accessed when I'm looking at a preview, but I show everything else. And I hide the table of contents. Um, and so now let, let's just review some of these things. So normally, right here, where, where it says AKA, it wouldn't have links here. and and. What happens is if you go, if you click on this link, Capella, it's going to show you all the people who are in the Capella family group. And so similarly, I can do that with Capellan now, and it's not showing anybody. And but I can do it with Kaplan. Oh. Let's see. So it just it just adds links to those um, to those AKA names that weren't there before. Now right. in the find menu. We've added, uh, Ian has added the apps submenu, so you can find all your apps. He's added uh, CC7 changes. There's the random profile, which you can constrain. Mm -hmm. And there's the random space page. Nice. And there's also down here, whoops, um, is your what links here. You can get a more detailed what links here off of that. Mm -hmm. um, now, so then we're all familiar with, let me just find an example of one. Oh, let me find an example of a name. We're all familiar with this part, right? We've all seen this on Wikitree. Mm -hmm. this, this is one of the greatest features on Wikitree because it lets you, you know, quickly look around and see what, what else do we know about this person and et cetera. But Wikitree browser extension adds this. So if you've got a reference, and you don't want to scan all the way down to the bottom of the page to see what the details of that are. You can just hover over the reference. And nice. there it is. And that's really nice. But then you can also preview a space page. And you get a lot of information here. I, as I showed you, you can, you can specify some of the details of what you want to show. For example, show the categories, show the, the, uh, the date and location, et cetera. But basically, you got a nice preview here of the page. And here's here's another example, the Siege of Quebec. And we've even got the images are previewed. Wow. 
this, this is really convenient. And the other wow. thing is, now, if if this if the preview has a space page on it, can you go deeper? The preview of a preview? I don't believe so. No. Okay. No. <laughs> um, now you notice the scissors are here. The oh scissors my Scissors are normally only on the profile pages. But the scissors are now on, if you turn turn on the feature, the scissors are now on all pages. We've also got this cool thing, my menu. So I've got my menu set up so that first thing in the morning I check my family activity feed and then I go look at my G to G feed and check my pending merges and check my suggestions. Mm. You just click on that and it brings up this box and then you can click on anything here and, and it moves over to there. You can have as much as you want and you can add custom links. Just type in your link here and, and your link text and you just create your own menu. That's really convenient. Um, there's an option called redirect links and you just want to turn that on because sometimes there are links in older pages that don't work anymore, but, um, but we've got the knowledge to figure out where they do link to. So this will just redirect it. And I've already showed you what links here. And so that's that's the stuff that I, I missed this morning. So now let's talk about editing. So we're going to start by adding someone. So Arch, Archie Campbell from New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And nice. he's missing his wife. So we're going to add her. So we could, if we knew that she had an existing ID, I'm just going to use my ID here. But we could just type in an ID and it would bring up this little preview just to make sure that it's the right person, right? But we're not going to do that today because I'm not his spouse. We're <laughs> going to create a new profile. And... So there's your normal screen that you see for adding a profile, but you've, you've got this up at the top, edit spouse mm -hmm. of Archibald Campbell. So it just reminds you what you're doing mm -hmm. and who you're attaching to. Now I've cheated. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go up there and I'm in Acadia and I'm going to okay. double click on this entry and boom, it's been added there. Wow. So this tells me that Ale Alexander Campbell married Julia Golding on this date. So I, I, I prepared this last night, so right. I just wanted it to be ready so I didn't have to do all this work yeah. live on screen. So I'm going to put that. Now I can get rid of that. And we know that she is. How did you? That's her name. Let's get that in there. Okay. And I've purposely mm. written the dates using this wow. format <laughs> yeah. to show you what's going to happen here. So 0401, and it turns it into 4Jan. Ah. Similarly Look here. I tab out of there, and it fixed it. Very nice. Now I'm going to say, now I'm gonna say Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And it's going to give me a lot of choices about Newcastle. And it's not helping me here. I thought it would help me more. Mm -hmm. um, there, there it is. Right. I gave it a little bit more detail and it was able to find the right one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're going to put in the death. Location. I see sex at birth has already been set to female because it looked at the name Etta Julia and decided that that's probably a female. Figured that out for me. That's nice. Now, so up here in the birth date, um, it, 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 it'll, it'll help you if you put in, put it in, in a weird format, um, with the birth, birth location, it'll try and figure out, you know, if you type in a, a word like Newcastle, uh, you, you narrow it down a little bit and it's going to go look at your, at your relatives and see, mm. well, you know, do, do I have, does this person have any relatives that were from an, a place called Newcastle and where was that? So it helped, it starts to figure all that out. Okay. So now we've got, we've got sources in here and we could, 
go look at Archie Campbell's sources. Maybe he's got something useful in here that we want to copy over. But in this case, we don't. So we're going to get rid of that. And so I'm just going to add. Oh, wow. Added spouse. But if, if there was a census from when after they were married, you could have added that, yeah. right? There might have, yeah, there might have been something in his um, mm -hmm. that, that I could use and carry over into this one. So um, so that, that's just an, uh, an added bonus that Ian has given us. So now so now mm -hmm. we've got the we've got the, the profile created. Um, we've, we've got the sources in. We know who this person is. So now we're going to continue. And it's going to say, well, I found somebody that's maybe a match for this person. Take a look. Okay. Well, no, this person is from Georgia. So if we <laughs> use the location filter, no, no, that doesn't work. Name, no, it doesn't really match. And the dates, no, that doesn't quite work. So we're not going to set this person as spouse. We're going to say none of these is a match. Create the profile. And there we are. We've got to create a profile. Nice. Now I want to show you a different one. So th this is Marie Curie. Everybody knows about Marie Curie. I'm going to create, mm -hmm. I want to create my own Marie Curie. Uh oh. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a newbie to WikiTree. I don't realize that Marie Curie has already been created. So I'm going to spell her first name wrong. Mm. It's actually Maria Curie. And I'm only going to give vague dates. Mm. And I put in Warsaw, Poland, and France. Okay. And I've skipped ahead. And now what this has done, it, it has gone ahead and highlighted and sorted the matches. And it had found that there's a Maria Curie. Mm -hmm. whose birth year matches, death year matches, and it has a partial birth location match. Now, what's the difference? I, I typed in Warsaw, Warsaw, Poland, mm -hmm. and this one is Warsaw, Warsawski, Polska. Mm. And Ian's code has managed to figure out that Polska and, and Poland are the same place. Mm -hmm. And so we have a partial birth match. Now, if we had a more rigorous location database and, and more services in Wikitree, we might, we might be able to narrow that down further, but... This, this is pretty darn good, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you that, that that's kind of a new feature that, that uh, he's just recently added. Wow. All right. So now we've created her profile, and that's all good. We're going to leave her the way she is, and we're going to go back to Guillaume. And we're going to edit Guillaume. So we'll just skim down here. And I want you to notice some things that that are happening here. First of all, there's an AGC button. Now, mm. there's no uh, there's no GEDCOM code in here. I'm not sure why it's thinking that this is this has GEDCOM code in it. But in any case, if you have GEDCOM code in your profile, this AGC button will appear. And the if you press the AGC button, it'll generate a profile for you from the the GEDCOM code that's in there. We've also added this. Click on this button and it just opens up your edit box and you can work on it however you want. And you can escape to get out of there. Up here, whoops. So there's family members. Mm -hmm. And if we click on one of those, for example, let's click on his father. There's his father's sources. So we nice. can grab stuff from there. So that's the same list that showed that showed up when we were in the ad stage, ad profile exactly. stage. Exactly. But you can do that for for anybody, oh. any of his relations, including yourself. Including yourself. <laughs> yeah. um, you can adjust the font size, mm -hmm. which I find very handy. Very handy. And so that's all we've added on this row. This is the uh, WikiTree Plus edit, uh, edit Helper, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And so this whole row, um, um, Alesh created this, and, and Ian has added stuff into the spaces. So for example, you could edit a template. So here's a migrating ancestor template. And um, hmm. oh, yeah, edit template, edit this template. So I can go in here, and I can edit, edit template. I can add any template. 
right? I can narrow that down to stickers and narrow it down to which sticker I'm interested in, et cetera. Do similar thing for categories. I can be more specific and say I want to add a location category. Nice. And it doesn't get that because they didn't put the accent in. All the accents. Yeah, it's oh, accent specific. Is... Huh. There we go. Oh, there we go. Whew. Just took a moment. Um, you can add, add a cemetery. You can add a one name um, group. Under biography, you've got auto bio. Now, auto bio <coughs> should be used mm -hmm. with care. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, when you use auto bio, what it's going to do is going to it's going to look at all of your sources and it's going to try and figure things out. It's going to figure out when the person was born, when they got married, uh, who they married, what children they have, etc. They're going to it's going to look through the sources and try and figure out a bio, and it'll generate the text to create that bio, and it'll copy the sources up into citations. Now, when it does that, it can do some some weird things sometimes. For example, it might um, it might give you the opening paragraph that says you were born on a certain date, but the citation it might use might be a census record. And a lot of us don't like that idea that you'd use a census record. So you can you can tune that up a little bit. But the one the thing I wanted to show you in in this profile because I've never put it in in this profile is I can add birth and parent. So it's just going to look at the details that I've got in. Come on. There we go. There it is. So it just look, looked at the details of what I had in the data fields. Hmm. And it said, okay, Guillaume Capella was born in this date, in this place, mm -hmm. and is the son of the son of these people. And it just nice. plug that in. Okay. I can then go down here and I can say, um, Spouse and child. So now hmm. Guillaume and and uh, unknown Micmac were married in 1700, and their children were. Oh, look at that! Nice little, nice little feature. Now, let's say we wanted to put in a table. Mm. Look at that. That's so what sweet. I'm going to do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go here. And I'm going to grab this. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see that, but it's the alphabet as a comma separated value list in five rows. Now, we all know that you, you can't fit the alphabet into a five by five matrix. And so you end up with. end up with a table like that. Now I can grab that. And go down here and paste it in. And then when I preview, there we go. Preview. There's my table. Mm hmm. Your Christmas table. Yeah. My Christmas table, yes. And I'm just going to remove. Oh, wait. I'm not going to remove that just yet because okay. I needed to show you this. So now I'm going to turn on the enhanced editor. Ooh. Now, the so you can set up custom styling on the enhanced editor so that it highlights things that you want, want to be able to recognize when you see them. So you can mm -hmm. see that I've marked, made sure that these, these uh, brackets are marked. And the table gets highlighted. And I'm just going to delete that. But you can see as I move down through here, it's highlighting different things. Mm. Sometimes it makes it easier to see what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here, you can see that this is a citation. And this, the text of the citation is a different uh, font, different color, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All right, now let me go back to my list. Um, I'm going to turn off the enhanced editor. Okay. Uh, 
Family drop down, the family lists. Oh, the save button. Mm. So if I go down here, didn't do it quite right. So this one here, delete drag, that should be a button. It doesn't always, uh, mm. the formatting doesn't always catch up. But basically, these two were buttons before, and these two were just text strings. Right. And so Ian has made it so that they're all four supposed to be buttons. And so they're just easier to see. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you can do is you can add your own options to this list. Mm -hmm. So you can see I've added these strings so that I can now go, I can just click added image and boom, I'm done, right? Hmm. Um, yeah. We've seen the editor expand. Scissors, shareable resources, sticky tool. Oh, the sticky toolbar. Mm -hmm. Sticky toolbar. What's that about? This is a long profile. When you're in edit mode, right? So the yeah. So scroll, see that? So I scroll, that. and that toolbar just stays there. And I can keep going down, and it just stays there usefully for me. Very nice. Um, category. Oh yeah, I'm not covering category management. Um. Oh, add, ca add, yeah, category, categories. So here, mm -hmm. there's the auto categories. And now, it's not this is not going to be much help for this particular mm -hmm. one. But basically, you click auto categories, and it goes through and looks through the whole profile and all of your sources. And it tries to figure out, is there any categories that it can add to this page that weren't there already? And we'll just give it a minute. Stop shaking. So, oh, it is shaking. So, yeah. When I've tried it. auto category, sometimes it shakes for a while, and sometimes I'm just impatient. I think it's. Ah, so it added category Canada New Golf Rounds. Ah, okay. Which. That's a rather large category. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't really want to be in that category. Um, okay, what else do I need to show you about? Let me, I'm just checking for uh, checking my list, making sure, sure. I've got everything. Yeah, no problem. So I'm not showing you BioCheck because I think you saw that in the last session. We did. Uh, category management stuff will be covered later. Uh, the date fixer we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, change summary options, family drop down, family lists. Uh, the save button, editor expand. Oh, editing. Yeah, editing the style. So where is my, there it is. And editing, enhanced editor styles. So there's quite a few things that you can do in here to tune that up. We've got a language helper. Oh. Sorry, locations helper language setting. Yeah. Um, oh, making the radio buttons deselectable. So oh, okay. they weren't previously. Mm -hmm. So previously, if I had set that certain, mm -hmm. I couldn't unset it. Now I can. Uh -huh. um, the migration category helper is going to be covered later. The scissors are covered. Shareable resource. Um, yeah, I've shown you shareable resources. The sticky toolbar, the wiki the table wizard and the wiki tree plus. So I think I've covered, well, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought this was going to take me a lot longer to cover. <laughs> so now, now I understand I've, I've glossed over a lot of stuff. I've made it, made it uh, quick and dirty coverage of all of it, all of this, but um, I think that about does it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit without saving anything. Okay. So delete draft and return to profile without saving. Ah, okay. Yes, we because they, we've, they've instituted saving your draft. So if you do some work and you leave it, that exists somewhere on the server, right? Right. So by deleting the draft, all of that temporary stuff is gone. Okay. Yeah, which is why, where is it now? Find... 
No. Oh. Drafts. There we go. This, sorry, I, I, I neglected this one earlier. So find drafts. That This one will tell you about any drafts that you um so apparently i have a draft of jean jean baptiste lecoeuf and i'm going to discard that draft okay we'll go back to Guillaume. so I think we're now open for, for lots of questions because like, like I said, I did a sort of high mm -hmm. level overview of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So now maybe we could. Okay. We do have some questions here. Um, and uh, my, my dog just saw someone pulling in, so we may have some barking as well. Um, so uh, Marsha asked, uh, I enabled the browser extension to the move the children to the right side. And why are some females pink and some green? And Ian actually answered that the so ones that are green are pro um, probably because they there were, there might have been a issue with the server it hasn't caught up so it doesn't e it either doesn't know the gender um, because the, because of privacy issues or if the if the server ha is busy and it can't retrieve that information in time is that thank you Ian okay. Uh, so I think that's the I think that's the answer that and then Marsh I think I read the comments later on Marsha tried again and they came in uh, pink and blue I guess it would be right. Uh, Stephen said had a question about when he went into BioCheck he saw or he saw two BioCheck boxes or two AGC boxes. Okay, and so that, mm -hmm. that's because you've got two versions of the browser extension open. So right. if you've got double, so I can do that. Mm -hmm. No, no, it won't let me, right? Did this oh no, it won't let me. If oh. I had if I had two if I had two of them open, then I, I'd get doubles. This this is right. something we discovered a while ago. Right. And also also if there was two AGCs, if he had the AGC extension, which used to be an extension all onto itself, yes. that is now incorporated into the WikiTree browser extension. So you don't need the AGC extension anymore. Correct. That's correct. We, we 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 encourage you to disable the 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 old the standalone app. Right, right. Okay. David asks, when I click on a profile in the family list drop down, it copies the link, but it does not show the sources. So let me click on maybe Ian knows the answer to that one. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, Ian, have you answered that one in the chat? Ian said there may be an option you haven't enabled. <laughs> okay, maybe turn on the shareable sources feature. This one right here. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Connect with Connect the family dropdown. There we go. That makes sense. Okay, I think that's it. Do you see that, David? Oh, yeah. He says it's sorted now. Okay, good. <laughs> that's good. Okay. I, but I love Ian's response. I just, just turn on everything. Turn on all the options. <laughs> yeah, in fact, there, there's very few of the options that I don't normally have on. Mm -hmm. Um. For today's for today's demo, I've turned off a few. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, I never use the wills and estates. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I never use confirm thank you, so I don't I don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, I I I've never used the migration category helper. Mm -hmm. um, normally, I have this turned on. Normally, I have that turned on. Normally, I have that turned on. Mm -hmm. And. I think the only other two I don't turn on is dark mode and visited links. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's okay. Is there anything about the bra So, uh, do other people have questions? Now we've got Murray here and we've got Ian in the chat. We even have the in the chat. Um, okay. Bill had a question. It looks like, 
The CC7 option does not show on my profile. I have it configured and don't understand why. Any suggestions? So, Bill, are you connected to the, my first question would be, are you connected to the tree? And my guess is yes, you are. So but, first thing, go to connections. Okay. Second thing, go to CC7. Is this what you're looking for? Okay. Yes. Bill says yes, that's what he's looking for. Okay. Um, now, when you click when you click CC7 changes the first time, it's oh. just going to collect a bunch of data. Mm -hmm. um, when you click it subsequent times, then it's going to look for any changes within right. your within your um, within your CC7 range. Mm -hmm. So you you would you would have had to have added profiles, or somebody would have had to have, have added profiles in the meantime. Right. Um, where is CC7 changes? Because I've added some people. I wonder if there it is. I wonder if I can show that. No changes since you last checked. Hmm. I guess the people I added were too far out on the, my branch. Um, OK, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Are there any parts of the, the browser that you haven't shown us yet? Any other uh, options? Uh, let's see. Wikitree browser extension. You talked about categories, but you had, didn't go into much detail about them. Well, OK, let's look at categories. Uh, you said there was a category manager? Or is that, is that something different? No, I just turned it on, and there's going to be um, there's going to be a present. There, there, there we go. There's going to be a presentation about this later today. Oh, so okay. You see here, I could remove this category, or I could change the na change its name. Oh. I I can also add categories. Oh, right there, without even being in edit mode. Right. Well, it'll throw me into edit mode. Oh, I see. Okay. Let's oh, oh yeah. that's handy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's there's some stuff that you can do here, and there's there's even more that you can do with the um, mm -hmm. category management. But I'm not as familiar with it. Okay. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna let let uh, I'm gonna let Flo discuss that later on. Oh, okay. So he's covering that at the four o'clock session. Yes. Okay then. Super. Um, covered no the image zoom. Okay. Uh, you know, there, there's the custom style. I mean, we could look at that a little bit more. You can set mm -hmm. some background colors for various things, like I've done. Um, basically, okay. I've just tried to tune this so that it, you know, it, it's using, it's exercising all of the the options here, mm -hmm. but. Um, uh, not being, you know, not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done the category display, the family list, the oh. descendants tree. Um, you know, we haven't really gotten into the readability options. So, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I quickly reviewed this, but there's a lot you can do with this to make it look right. the way that you want. And things that you like to see and things that you don't care about seeing. Um, Okay. If you, um, there is a question here about asking for an iPad demo of one of the features. Do you want me to? Yeah. Would you like to do that? I will try that. Let's let's just see. Um, first, let's see if I can share my screen. Uh, actually, let's. I have to find. I have to find my iPad. Window with the recording. And now, can't believe I covered it all. <laughs> you did a great job. You really did. That's wild. Okay, so here is my iPad screen. Um, so 
Susie would like a demo of the clipboard and the notepad. Okay, Susie, careful what you ask for. Um, so here I am in, uh, so I'm still stuck at the settings page here. Um, and let me see. So I've got clipboard and notes already configured there. So that's good. And let me go down and change. Uh, it looks like it remembered the settings I had last time. So it looks like this is going to be the settings I want. So I'm going to go back into let's um, it's already logged in as myself. Uh, so I will go to my um, profile. Actually, I'm going to go to my go to my family tree. And let's just randomly click Dona Cloutier. Uh, lots of brothers, lots of family. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. Okay. And let's see what's on my, I'm not sure what's on my, my clipboard is empty and my, let's see on my notes. My notes are empty too. Well, that's rather, so we, we get to start from, from scratch. <laughs> um, so what would I like to open ref uh whoops open ref what what are you su suggesting murray well i'm suggesting that you add a citation yes okay like copy one of the ones i've got here yeah sure whatever okay i'll do that okay let's just um let's see if my no my apple pencil is not acting the way i want it to Let's copy that all the way down. I'm using my finger to highlight that, and that's a little bit of a tricky thing to do. And then I need to grab that there. Oh, oh I went too high. There we go. Copy. Uh, and now I'm going to add that to. We... Oh, where to go? Oh, look at that. The icon for the clipboard and the notebook are right in the the menu bar right there. Yeah. And would you suggest to the clipboard or to the notepad? Uh, clipboard. Clipboard. OK, there we go. So I'm going to put it here. Paste. Paste. And I'm going to give it um, uh, Quebec. I'm going to give it a name. Now the question is, where, how do I, where did my keyboard go? Where is my key? You don't have a keyboard? Uh, it's okay. Don't, you, don't, you don't need a group. I don't need a group, but... No, you can just I, add a click. I'd like to type a group. Well, I'm sure you would, but you don't have a keyboard. <laughs> I don't have a keyboard. Where did the keyboard go? That is weird. Okay, well, I'll just add clipping. There we go. So now I've got it in the clipboard. Um, and so if I want to reuse it on a different because that's a census, right? So anyone who was born in night, who was part of his family, we could use that, we could reuse that same site, um, same source, correct? Yes, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. And I'm going to now go to one of his children, let's say uh, Marie Marguerite. So I'm gonna click on this link here, which automatically opens up uh, Marie in edit mode, and she was, okay, she wasn't actually born, so I'm going to put it, okay, I, I really don't know why my keyboard, keyboard, show keyboard, there we go, okay, so I'm going to type in reference note, reference note, Marie was not born in, what year was that? Was that 1901 or 1911? I think it was 01. 01, oh, okay. And then I'm gonna add that reference to the census. <laughs> it's kind of a, a null source citation or a negative source citation, but yeah, I click on that and should it have just gone straight in? 
uh, you should you double click on it. Double click. There it is. In here. Um, I'm going to put a little space there. And we can preview that. And there we go. Reference note. Ray was not born in 1901. And there is the source citation as it was copied and pasted and stored in our clipboard. And okay, I don't know why I have to do that over time, but uh, demo. Demo. Save. OK. So that's an example of using the clipboard, which you can use for copying and pasting. Just double click on it on what you've copied there and then add it. The notepad, let me just hit the notepad there, um, is for a thing. So I sometimes use this as uh, to-do lists or um, need to prep uh, for math and genealogy uh, session later. Oopsie. Genealogy session later. Add note. Or other things, right? You can keep track of, of whatever you want. And of course, you can edit and edit that or, or delete it, whatnot. But that's how you work with that. I'm not sure if the, the keyboard popping up or not is is a common thing with the iPad or if it's just because I've got it, I've got a cable here I'm showing you. See, I'm doing this, this is my iPad. I've got a cable that goes into my Mac and then that's playing through QuickTime so I can share it on my screen with you. That's the, that's what's happening behind the curtain. So I think I think it's the cable that is and the connection, to, direct connection to the Mac that is messing up the keyboard settings on the, I don't think it's the, it's not the browser extension. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any other questions about using the browser extension on the iPad while I have it here? I tried that, Alesh says use the Mac's keyboard. I'm supposed to be able to do that. Oh, and look at here. Now I, I, I can, I'm using the, oh, wait a second. Oh, that's, that's weird. Okay, so if I go into, <laughs> See the the circle that's there? I'm using yeah, my your Mac. Trackpad. I'm using my trackpad on my Mac. Uh -huh. uh, let, okay, let me see. Can I? So let's uh -huh. go to edit mode. Am I in edit mode? I'm not in edit mode. Do I have to double click to it to get it? There. Okay, double click. So I'm in edit mode. So now can I use the keyboard on my Mac? Uh, Hello. Those are supposed to be research yes. notes, by the way. What's that? Those are, those should be research notes, not reference notes. Oh right, yes. Okay. And now I've I've messed up. Oh shoot, I've lost. Okay, this is the case where I'm going to want to use that delete return to profile without saving. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyways, you guys don't want to see me hacking around and figuring how to use keyboards. Um, questions. Let's see. Were there any more questions in the chat while I was doing this? Uh, let's see. Um, taking a quick look, see through the chat. Uh, so Jay had a, had a question. With all that the Wikitree browser extension has incorporated, which standalone extensions, if any, Chrome in my case, are still viable? So I would say the Wikitree browser extension is of course the first one you should always install the wikitree sourcer and the wikitree b those are the three that are still um they still have a different op, a different functionality and all three of them work together on this now uh do you want to talk about because some of the stuff from wikitree b which was ian ian's first extension has now migrated to the wikitree browser extension in fact most of that a lot of that original stuff is there but there's still new stuff being added into wikitree b and i don't know if you want to talk about that migration path or if we leave that to flow this afternoon or but i mean i think it's well, relevant here if you want to just yeah. give an overview so i think i think flow is going to talk about that later uh, but let me mm -hmm. let me say this about that um 
m most of most of the things that Ian has uh, that Ian can move from B into WBE have been moved. Um, there may be some remain there may be some remnants that are, that are going to come into WBE. When when they move into WBE, they are first removed from B, so that there's no conflict between the two. Um, B does not run on Safari. Oh, so so there are things that um, that that others can do to in B that won't make it into Safari, but will make it into Chrome and and possibly and presumably Firefox, um, but they just won't make it to Safari, and that's because. Um, as Ian is quick to point out to me mm -hmm. almost every day, um, Apple Gur. So Apple, <laughs> Gur. Apple, Apple does some things that are different from the others. Mm -hmm. um, and notably, you can't run a browser on an Apple, uh, on Apple equipment without using their browser engine. And this causes problems. It has caused problems for, for Greg as well, trying to, yes. trying to make things work with the fan chart, et cetera. Yeah. So, um, so there are some things that will only ever be in B, and and that's okay. Um, but but yeah, the, for the most part, the two that you want to use definitely are Sourcer and the WikiTree browser extension. B has some stuff in that you might want to use on the other browsers, mm -hmm. and uh, and certainly some very useful tools, and especially in terms of uh, categorization and migration categories and stuff like that. Um, but uh, anyway, he'll be talking. Flo will be talking about all that later. Yeah. Okay. Good. Apple Gur. Oh, he just put the. There we go. Apple Gur. Oh, that's too bad. Um, now, and Debbie did ask: Are the clipboard and notes for the profile or the user? They're actually for the user. And in fact, now are they? I think they're also browser specific, right? So if I have, I've got. <laughs> you saw me. I've got four versions of um, the browser extension installed on my I've got on my Chrome, my Firefox and Safari on my Mac and also on my iPad. So if I make notes, I could have four different sets of notes in all of those areas. Is that correct, Murray? Yes. And now you can export. Oh, right. That's the part you of the data. data. When you said export data, that's the stuff from the clipboard and the notepad, right? That's right. Among right. other things. Among other things. Yes. So you could export and then import so to keep them in sync if you wanted to, or just remember what you're doing <laughs> where, I guess. But it does not, no one else, no other Wikitree user would see the notes that you've done unless you're sharing screen like I am and right. you show things that you shouldn't be. Um, uh, right. right. Okay. Well. I think we've we've covered this lots. Um, any other questions before we sign off? Well, before we do that, let me just yeah. say, let me just say this. Um, okay. You know, I, I've been working with these extensions for the past six months, mm. and they've just made my whole effort around genealogy so much easier. Um, it, it's easier to browse around WikiTree when you have the extension. Mm -hmm. It's easier to edit stuff when you have the extension, and it's real easy to find sources when you have the sourcer. And yeah. a co a, the combination of these two tools have really ramped up my ability to uh, to create profiles. Um, so you know you can. I don't know about others, but the way that I work is is I do my research tree and ancestry, mm -hmm. right? Try and figure things out collect sources and do whatever until I feel confident about that family. And then I start using Sourcer to copy that family over into, into WikiTree. Mm -hmm. um, and th these tools just make everything so wonderful. And I, and I really want to, um, you know, we're, we frequently uh, are thanking Ian mm -hmm. and Alesh, um and others for the, for the work that they're doing and you, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Jonathan, Jonathan gets mm -hmm. left out of the mix a lot, and I, I just really want to thank him. I I was a, I, I still am a member of the uh, WikiTree browser extension team, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jonathan just made that so much easier for me to be a part mm -hmm. of that team. And but I and I really appreciate the work that he did on um, all, all the linking stuff and on the readability options. I'm right. I'm a huge fan of hypertext and and uh, and, and linking and and 
all of that. And I just really appreciate what he did. And I hope everybody else will appreciate that too. Great. Well, thank you very much, Murray. That's, that's great. That's a, a, a great summary. And uh, yes, thanks to everyone who's worked on this and worked on the browser extension. That's super. So um, I'm gonna, we're going to bring this session to a close. And now you have a little bit of a break. And then at 1.15, there is a, um, a, the celebration, the, um, the toast, the anniversary toast, which is uh, if you go to the, the main stage. Uh, and let's see if I can find the schedule quickly here. Uh, but, but yeah, it's on, on the main stage. So if you go to the Wikitree, um, uh, the, the Wikitree main stage, um, 115 to 145 is the uh, 15th anniversary toast. And then followed at two o'clock our time or two hours and nine minutes from now will be the AI panel, which will be quite interesting. And then four hours and nine minutes from now will be flow uh, going through Wikitree B. So lots more to view and watch and enjoy on this Wikitree day. And for those watching after the fact, lots of videos that you should be lining up in your queue to watch. So thanks again, Murray, for uh, joining me on this. And um, great. Okay. See you all later. Have a great Wikitree day.